Okay, hi Hugh. Um, I've not seen any of your videos before until I just watched the last two videos that you posted in response to Ian. Um, and the reason that I'm posting this response to you rather than to Ian is because I think you've got a lot more common sense about this issue and really Ian just doesn't get it. Um, the whole thing that's going on with Ian at the moment, I have I have a big concern, firstly, about the fact that he's an actor. Now, I'm not for a second am I implying that just because someone's an actor that, you know, everything that they do is an act. But the amount of time that he spends on YouTube and just and the, and the way he's sort of showing this emotional and physical deterioration as he's going along is telling me that he's doing this not just for his own, um, you know, need to express himself, but he, I do feel he has other motives, and for that reason, I think that people need to, you know, take a lot of what he says with a grain of salt. I do think that his whole motivation for being on YouTube is is to get an acting career out of it, and um, so for that reason, I try not to get too involved in his videos. I actually stopped watching them quite a long time ago, um, but occasionally I'll just, you know, glimpse in and catch a, a few things that he says. I have really strong views about um, crime and punishment and um, while obviously each case has its own court process, a lot of the time the reaction of um, people, the viewers, is very black and white. For example, you know, you kill somebody you go to jail. Um, but I believe, you know, there are obviously circumstances, for example, you know, there could be a case where a, a, a person who's lived an exceptionally good life, you know, has one bad night, he has a few too many drinks, he gets in his car, he drives home, he hits and kills a small child. Now, while that is obviously wrong and there should be some form of you know, punishment or retribution, you you know, that man's entire life of good shouldn't be uh, ignored or um, you know, the rest of his life shouldn't be wasted because of making that one mistake. Um, the only way I can really relate it is when I see incidences that involve animals who obviously don't kill for the same motivation that humans do, um, it just astounds me the way people react. For example, there was a, the young man that was killed uh, by a shark about a year ago and, you know, people went out and, and killed sharks. I mean, God, how can the other sharks or even the shark who did the killing, you know, what what can be gained from, uh, from that? It's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the, the shark killed the man for food, not for any other reason. The case of um, Steve Irwin and being killed by the stingray. People went out and, and killed stingrays after that. I mean, that's just bizarre. But And a lot of people, you know, do understand that. But when it comes to humans, it, it gets really, really, really complicated. Now, I remember back to the um, Port Arthur massacre, Martin Bryant, where he killed about 35 people. Now, I couldn't talk about this to anybody because it was such an emotional subject and, and, and all that, but I felt sorry for that man because he obviously had had a completely fucked up life. He'd obviously had, you know, things said and or done to him that had, you know, enabled his way of thinking to go the way that it did to, to, to make him do what he did. And while, you know, 35 lives, you know, were lost and, and you know, there has to be consequences for that. Um, and, you know, whether he could have been rehabilitated, I don't know. And whether, you know, he should ever be allowed back, you know, into the real world, I don't know whether that should happen either. But the you know, what, why isn't what happened beforehand ever an issue? I mean, 
Michael Jackson, you know, when he got into all that child molestation trouble, the first thought that entered my head was, well, his father beat him. His father did terrible things to that child, and yet he never was punished for what he did. But, you know, Michael Jackson was going to be punished for possibly reacting to having had a an unusual, unhealthy childhood. Um, I don't think the law will ever go that way because, you know, people would abuse the system. I mean, God, I've got three young adult sons and, you know, if any of, and I raised them to the best of my ability and if any of them committed a, a you know, a terrible crime, I certainly wouldn't want to get the blame for it. Um, and, you know, even if even if they committed a crime that that might have been inspired by some form of negativity in their way of thinking because of something that I, you know, did as a parent uh, while even unaware of it. I mean, I wouldn't want to have to wear that either. And what parent would? I mean, once your children are adults, then, you know, they're obviously responsible for themselves. But, you know, it's such a fine line. And I think what Ian was trying to say was, you know, the, not the difference between right and wrong, but the difference between good and bad. Now, you know, the bottom line is, you know, there, there are three types of, of, of people in this world who commit, you know, sexual crimes or murder, you know, the really serious crimes. Now, the first type are the type that have had something bad or wrong done to them and as a result of that they're either seeking revenge or they're not able to think um, clearly about you know what's right and wrong they simply don't understand the difference between what is right and wrong and you know because they weren't shown what was right and wrong the second type is the um, type who really does it just for the thrill of it I, I dread to think that there actually are people like that in the world. I dread to think that there are people who've had absolutely, you know, fulfilling, healthy upbringings and, and are capable of, you know, then going out and committing a heinous crime on another person just for the thrill and the pleasure of it. I can't even imagine that there are people like that in the world, but, you know, I guess there are. Um, and then, of course, there are people who are just mentally ill, people who are born with, you know, things not quite right. And, and you know, how do we deal with those people? That's, you know, it's such a sensitive subject. But I do believe in forgiveness in, in a lot of the cases. For example, Hugh, you said... Um, to Ian, would you forgive the man who murdered your sister or something like that? Now I ask you if you and your best mate and your sister went out for a night on the town and you all had too much drink to drink and your mate was driving you home and he smashed into a, crashed into a tree and killed your sister, would you forgive him? I mean Every single case is, you know, open to interpretation. And in that sense, I do agree with Ian, and I think that's what he was trying to say, in that using the words right and wrong, it makes it much too easy for people to just pigeonhole or to, you know, make everything black and white or to just put it in a box, close the lid, because they're too fearful to confront it. I think and I hope that that's what Ian was trying to say. But still, bottom line is, there's no doubt in my mind, there definitely is right and wrong. Some things will always be wrong, no matter how you look at it, you know, no matter what's happened to you in the past, no matter what society you come from, or how you've lived your life, or how poor you are, or how rich you are, or how fucked up you are, some things are just 
plain wrong. Thanks for your time. Bye.